The heat of the sun smacked my face the second I stepped out onto the street. I untucked my shirt and rolled up my skirt at least an inch. Mammy thought I was too young to wear miniskirts and Pops didn't think it was right for any girl to wear them. Who cared what they thought? The daily sweats were about to begin. But the heat wasn't as bad as what hit my senses next. The El Barrio fart smell of garbage. With the hot sun beating down, food rotted even faster. The smells of spoiled fish, melons, and beans blended together into one big funky mess that stunk like everybody had decided to cut loose some gas at the same time. I tried to walk with my nose in the air so I wouldn't have to smell the albario fart. But the only way to avoid it would have been to fly. The steps didn't seem to bother two little kids who were doing a good job cooling off by throwing water balloons at each other. The fire hydrants weren't open all the way like they would be later in the day, but they trickled enough water so that the kids could fill up their balloons. I couldn't blame them. Water balloon fights were as close as those kids were going to get to water sports this summer. Feel that. Almost holding my breath, I walked around the corner to Lexington and looked around at the usual scene of old men playing dominoes. The guy who sold Balanzatillo's Fritos, coldest fritters, from his pushcart, old ladies who spent the day leaning on windswell pillows, looking out the windows onto bunches of kids whose only way of enjoying the great outdoors was to hang out on the fire escapes and stoops. At the end of the day, when I got home from work, I was going to see the same people doing the same things. Nothing changes in El Barrio. As I walked down Lexington, there was that kid on Hell Santiago, the biggest pain in the world, coming up the street. I pretended not to see him, but he saw me. Well, what do you know? If it isn't Rosa Maria Evelyn del Carmen Sereno. He used to talk about names. He had the stupidest names of all time on Hell. What was he, a spirit? Besides, there was nothing angelic about him. He ran up alongside me, he kept walking. Hey, he was trying to keep up with my steps. I'm busy, and hell, I'm going to work. Well, excuse me, I kept moving. He looked a little desperate. Can I walk you? No, I can walk myself. And another thing, my name is Evelyn. That's right, I forgot. It's just, it's just that I've been calling you Rosa for the longest time. That was true. Now, Helen and I have known each other forever. I lived on 110th Street near Lexington. He lived on 107th near a park. I couldn't remember a time when Hell wasn't around. Just like I couldn't remember a time he wasn't skinny and annoying. Sometimes my mother and Hell come upstairs to our apartment to eat. That's why he thought he was my friend. And Hell lived alone with his father, who sold fro frozen ices, paraguas from a pushcart. There was something funny about Angel's father. Is it Angel or Angel? Well, let's 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 switch to Angel. Not funny, haha, -ha, but funny weird. Sometimes he acted like he knew you, and sometimes he acted like he didn't. And he could be really mean. Like last month, he punished Angel for going on the roof to try and watch the 4th of July fireworks. To discipline Angel, his father made him kneel on raw rice while holding a pot of boiling water over his head. It was stuff like that that made Angel always look like somebody was going to hit him between the eyes. He wore such a pain expression all the time. The only thing that helped that helped Angel not look so sad was his long eyelashes. 
At least they gave him a cute face. But that kid still hurt going on. I'm sorry, but that kid still had hurt going on. He always bit his nails and chewed on the skin around them until they turned all red and raggedy. Angel had been left back one year at school, and when he came to school, he was in what they called the remedial class. Now he was working extra hard to keep with my steps. Angel, I have to go see you. I have to go see you. Yeah, sorry. I kept walking toward the third avenue to to the five and dime, leaving him behind. Like always, I counted my steps in my head. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. On eight, a water balloon smacked me in the back. I was going to start my first day of work with a wet blouse. When I turned around to see who thrown the balloon, another one came at my face. I'm gonna get you for that, Angel. Now my bangs were dripping wet. He ran up to me, all grinning and silly looking. Got you. He was laughing. I pushed him as hard as I could. He fell back, hit the ground, and stayed there with their hurt look on his face. Hey, it was just a joke. You're going to get dry in a minute. It's so hot out here. Angel was right. But now my bangs were frizzy and I was mad. People started slowing down as they passed Angel on the ground and me standing over him. Then they looked at me like I was the one who'd done something wrong. I left Angel where he was and started to walk off how mad I felt. Counting while walking always calmed me down. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I made my way toward Third Avenue. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I could have made a left on up to 116th Street, but decided to take a longer way over to First Avenue. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I finally took a left and walked past Thomas Jefferson Park up to 116th, where the five and dime was between first and second. I must have counted to eight about a million times between Angel and the store where I was going to be working. That's how many steps it took me to get unmet. I must have counted to eight about a million times between Angel and the store where I was going to be working. That's how many steps it took me to get unmet. Oh, I already said that. I tried to pat my bags. They felt like a blush. I looked in the side view mirror of a parked car to check them out. It was what I'd expected. They were all frizzy. Finger combing them to the side didn't help. Stupid angel. I tried to be calm when I got to the store and found Mr. Simpson, the manager, in the back office. Mr. Simpson was chubby with dark hair that came to below his ears. He was trying to wear his hair as long as he dared, but knew that he couldn't. Be two way out or he wouldn't have a job. My boss was trying to be a hippie, sort of. Someday I tell Pops that the man I worked for had hippie hair. Evelyn, he said, hi. Let's go right out and I'll show you what you have to do. He came from behind his desk and I noticed the buttons on his skirt were almost popping. First thing you do when you come to work is punch in, he explained, leading me to a big clock. You take this car with your name on it and push it down the slot when you get here and then again when you leave. That way we can keep track of exactly how many hours you work every day. Since you're just starting, your hours will change on a daily basis, but by punching in, we'll be able to keep track. I took the card and slipped it in the slot. 
It made a ching bang sound and marked the time on the card. I like this way of keeping track of things. Mr. Simpson and I walked out onto the store, into the store, and past the lunch counter, which had a row of saggy balloons hanging over it. I read the sign stuck onto the mirror behind the counter. Take a chance on a banana split. One cent to 79 cents. The balloons were stuffed with price tags ranging from a penny to 79 cents. And depending on which balloon you picked, you paid from one penny to 79 cents. This was the store's tricky way of selling banana splits. We walked toward the cannon counter and I kind of hoped Mr. Simpson would put me there with the cases of lollipops, licorice twitch, peppermints, raisinets, chocolate covered marshmallows, and my favorite, French creams. I never stole, but if Mr. Simpson had put me on the candy counter, I'd steal a French cream or two. Or maybe not steal, but liberate, as I'd heard some older boys in my neighborhood call it. We walked right past the candy counter and the hardware counter and went up to the makeup counter. No liberating, French creams for me. I guess Mr. Sister figured out that since I didn't wear a ton of Cleopatra eyeliner like everybody else in El Barrio, I wouldn't steal any. A lady stood behind the counter. Mr. Simpson introduced us. Lydia, this is Evelyn Serrano. I'm going to start Evelyn on this counter first. I was surprised he called the makeup lady Lydia. I mean, she was as old as my mother. I had to call people that I had to call people that old Don or Donna. I risk getting a dirty look from my mother for showing disrespect. Now, Evelyn, it'll be your job to stock the shelves when they start to get empty. You don't have to go to the stock room. One of the guys will bring the stuff. You just have to refill the counters with items. I looked around. There were counters with eyeshadows, lipsticks, and makeup pencils of all colors. I liked the way the eyeshadows went from dull to bright and the lipsticks from base to purple black. There was even a variety of black pencils with names like Midnight Coal and Ebony. They looked like little soldiers standing at attention. Evelyn, let me see how you do at the cash register, said Mr. Simpson. I already knew how the cash register worked from spending time in my parents' bodega, but I guess Mrs. Simpson wanted to make sure. An old lady came up with a bottle of wrinkled cream she wanted to pay for. Lydia and Mrs. Simpson watched me ring up the cream. At that same moment, I noticed three girls I knew from the neighborhood. I willed Dora and, Mig and Migdalia come in and sit at the lunch counter. Magdalia used to be my best friend, but was starting to hang out with Awilda and Dora. I miss visiting Magdalia, her mother, and her older brother, Wilfredo. They lived on welfare, and if it wasn't embarrassing enough for Magdalia, they hardly had any furniture. I mean, they had a sofa and beds and chairs, but Magdalia's family didn't have any little stuff like a toaster or a coffee maker or a TV, thanks to Wilfredo, who sold the stuff the minute their mother brought it. Their place always looked like they had just moved in or were getting ready to move out. Dahlia's father wasn't around. She and her mother were always worried, sick about Wilfredo, like he was the most important person in the world. It made me happy. I was an only child. Still, I had to admit, Wilfredo was gorgeous looking, even his, even with his troubles and all. Magdalia thought we should hang out more with Iwilda and Dora. She said she wanted to have more friends. What was wrong with having just one friend? I didn't need any more. Besides, Iwilda was a big mouth, always talking louder than she really had, had to so that people would notice her. Excuse me. From all the way over by the lunch counter, I heard her say, let's try for a cheap banana split. Then she picked a red balloon. Meanwhile, 
Wrinkle Face gave me a five dollar bill for the cream that costs one dollar and eighty nine cents plus tax. I figured out the change in my head even before the cash register told me that what to get from back, so I was able to keep track of what was happening at the lunch counter. The waitress popped a balloon and gave a wilder and and gave a wilder the bad news. She had picked a balloon with a seventy with a seventy nine cent price tag in it. I can't believe," it, said Dora. "How come we were never? How come we never get the thirty nine cent or the forty five cent or even the fifty cent banana split?" I gave Wrinkle Face her change and her and put her cream in a bag. I couldn't believe how dumb and well done Dora were. It didn't take a genius to figure out that all those balloons had prices of seventy nine cents in them. Gala should have known better, but Wilda and Dora wouldn't have listened to her. She was a new friend, the one always going along. Mr. Simpson and Leah were so busy watching me they didn't notice what was happening at the lunch counter. Very good, Evelyn," said Mr. Simpson. "Excuse me, you stay here. Leah will help you if you run into any trouble." I'll be in my office if you need me. And Dora and Medalia came over to the makeup counter. Dora started looking at the nail polish. Lydia said, "I'm going to the bathroom." And just as Lydia stepped down from behind the counter, I saw Dora slip a bottle of polish into her bag. Medalia made me believe she didn't see it. I didn't say anything. Hey, Evelyn, Medalia said. Hey, Medalia. That was as far as our conversation went. It's getting spicy. Mister Simpson came over. A wilder Dora and Medallion knew enough to disappear. Where's Lydia? Bathroom. Evelyn. The store's going to get really busy with people who shop on their lunch hour, and I want to move all this old Fourth of July merchandise. As soon as Lydia gets back, go over to the paper goods counter and help Dolores. Dolores was black. Ever since Martin Luther King Jr. was assassinated last year, I seem to notice black people more, especially darker-skinned people like Dolores. When Lydia came back, I went to Paper Goods. Dolores looked older than me. Maybe she was sixteen. Hi, I'm Evelyn. Mr. Simpson wants me to help you. A line was beginning to form at the Paper Goods register, getting longer and longer. I'm Dolores, and I can show you some help. Dolores's skin was the color of Hershey's chocolate. She had two-toned lips. Her upper lip was darker than her lower one, and her teeth were as white as the inside of a coconut. Dolores had pretty eyes that slanted up at the corners. The only thing that messed up her style was her hair. Ooh. It was straight into a flip, but because it was stiff, one side flipped out more than the other. I looked at her lopsided hair while she stared at my bu bu、uh, bushed-out bangs. I bushed-out bangs. I tried to push my bangs to the side, but they were still frizzy. Dolores said, "Here's what we'll do. I'll ring him up, and you back." It's a good thing Dolores had a plan. The place was overrun by people coming in to buy Fourth of July plates, cups, and napkins. We had to work fast. Dolores said. People around here love America when the price is right. I guess everybody's patriotic at half price. It's a bar. Give me one second.、Ooh. Sorry, guys. When a customer spoke fast Spanish that sounded like a machine gun, I remember the name the Las Platos. Dolores looked at me, hoping to get a translation. The woman was going on and on about how much she loved paper plates because she didn't have to wash them. But I didn't feel like going into all that, so I just whispered, "Let's just say." She is super patriotic. Dolores and I crapped up and kept ringing and begging. We worked fast. When I looked up, the long line was gone. Dolores let out a breath. Woo! 
The paper goods department began to empty out. I guess I'll go back to the makeup counter, I said. The lawyers bumped his shoulder to mine. You're a good bag, Revelyn. Thanks for the help. When I got back to the makeup counter, Lydia was dusting the lipsticks. Her accent was Spanish, but a little different than mommy's. You Puerto Rican, she asked. Yes, I'm Dominican. I thought so. So what do you want? A medal for being Dominican? Then Lydia started to speak rapid Spanish. Something about how she didn't want to work because she had three kids, but had to work even though it was hard to find a babysitter. Blah, blah, blah. I didn't want to hear any of that stuff, so I cut her off. I don't really speak Spanish that well. Not that it was true. I mean, I understood Spanish as long as the person talking didn't use big words. I just didn't want to have to listen to Lydia. Telling her I didn't speak Spanish shut her up right away. Say, Puso Sosa. That was one of my favorite expressions in Spanish. It means literally that all flavor left her face. That's not right. Say, say Puso Sosa. It was a little mean of me to stop Lydia. But it had been a long day. It was time to punch out. Bye, Lydia, I said. She still looks sour. Adios, Evelyn, she said quietly. I went into the back and punched out. See you, Mr. Simpson. My time tomorrow. Same time, Evelyn. I saw it was still hot, and Angel's father was selling Peru. Piraguas. Hi, Senor Santiago. I said carefully, wondering if he was going to remember me. Hey, Evelyn. Hey, Evelyn, right? Okay, Tom? Okay, he knew me this time. Great. Because I needed a nice cold snow cone and I didn't feel like dealing with an old man in a bad mood. He took the towel off the big square block of ice on his car and grabbed the ice scraper with his other hand and started to scrape. I always wondered how he knew exactly the number of scrapes it would take to fill a cone with just the right amount of ice. Build a cone perfectly. One thing that always bothered me about Senior Santiago's face was that it didn't agree with itself. Senior Santiago's mouth turned up and his smile, but his eyes were as sad as La Esperanza de un Pobre. As sad as the hope of a poor person. Qual quieres? he asked. I looked at all the colors of syrup. For pouring onto the scraped ice, there was white, red, purple, and blue, coconut, cherry, grape, and blueberry. Azul blue, I said. Senior Santiago poured syrup into the cone. That was my favorite part. Watching the syrup melt and darken the ice as I walked off slurping my cone, a cop approached Senior Santiago. I stayed near enough to hear the cop ask him, you got a license to sell that stuff? License? Yeah, license. No, I... You can't sell that stuff without a license. What if it's contaminated? Contaminated? Dirty. No, 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 it's clean. Just ask you rope. The police officer took out his pad and started to write a ticket. Yeah, well, the Board of Health might have another opinion. Wait, I can't pay a ticket. You got to. Buddy, it's the law. He gave Senior Santiago a summons, but I've been selling perigos for a long time. Doesn't doesn't make it right. Take care of that. The cop said as he walked away toward the guy who sold uh, Basalatillos Fritos Codfish Fritters. Senior Santiago said at the summons, he looked around like he needed to sell somebody something, but didn't know what or who to tell. His Esperanza de un Pubre eyes looked like they were going to cry. I was glad I'd gotten my perigua before the policeman got there. It's icy cold. Cool the heat of the summer day, but somehow the blue syrup didn't taste as sweet.